In this one, we're gonna be installing Python 3.6 on your Windows machine. Now, we could totally use other versions of Python. The reason I'm using Python 3.6 has to do with third-party packages. All third-party packages that we will use in this series support 3.6. That's not always true for newer versions of Python at this time. Now, by all means, pick a different version of Python, but if you don't wanna have any issues with those packages, use 3.6. So we're gonna install directly from python.org. I actually recommend this as the default way to install Python. There are other ways to install Python. There's other ways to have it work, uh, but I think for the vast majority of beginners, coming to python.org to install it is the preferred method. Okay, so what we wanna do here is go into downloads. Now, of course, if you click on downloads, you're gonna see this window here. Basically, we wanna look for the one specifically for Windows. So if you go to the downloads, the dropdown will do this, or if you click on Windows, same thing. And also, of course, this is the URL right here that would actually show Windows. So again, we wanna find Python 3.6. So let's go ahead and do Control F and then 3.6. So I'm just searching 3.6 right here and we wanna find a version of 3.6 that works here. So we'll just go ahead and keep looking. And what I'm looking for here is a actual executable installer for 3.6. And it might take me down to 3.6.8, which it is. Now, if you're on a Mac and you watch that one, this is the exact same one I did. I'm just gonna be using the Windows version of Python. Now the vast majority of this series is gonna be done on a Mac computer, but the commands running Python, running Django, all of that stuff works almost identical on our Windows. I'll mention the parts that don't, right? So if it's a little bit different on Windows, I'll definitely mention that at the time in the series itself. So you certainly can learn from it based off of Windows. Um, okay. so. What we wanna do here now is we wanna download an executable installer. Okay, so there's two kinds in here. There's a 64-bit one and then a 32-bit one. Uh, for older versions of Python like this, 3.6, of course, it's from 2018. That's okay. We're still learning. We're still getting things down. I will definitely mention how to use newer versions of Python in a moment. Uh, but the general idea here is we wanna find the executable installer that works for our system. So I'm pretty sure that the vast majority of new Windows machines are 64-bit systems. Uh, that's probably not always true, uh, but if you scroll up to the top, what you will see is you will see 32-bit installers as well for, for other versions of uh, Python. But of course, we're gonna be using 3.6.8, and so what I wanna do is actually get the correct version of that. I'm gonna have to go ahead and look for that again, um, and there we go. And so which one can we install? Now, if you are if you have doubts and you're like, I don't know if I have a 64-bit machine, just download the 32-bit one. It'll probably still work on your machine. Uh, but if you wanna know exactly what machine you have, you can go to the Start menu and then go into Settings. And inside of Settings, what we're gonna wanna do is go into your system and then scroll down to About. And what you'll see is the system type right there. So in my case, it's a 64-bit operating system. Of course, we could talk all day long about 32-bit versus 64-bit and what all those things actually mean, but that's not something I'm gonna do. That's outside the context of this. So just get the operating system type that you need, and then you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and just download the executable installer for it, which in my case, it's this one right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and download that, and then we'll go ahead and run it. So in my case, I actually already have it installed, right? So uh, you're just gonna wanna walk through all of the default installation here, like all of these optional features. I would say just get all of them, and realistically, you could also install this for all users if you need. Uh, that is something that I would recommend as well. And then if there is a way to add Python to environment variables, that's another thing you're definitely gonna want to select and using the default Python installation. And of course, mine right now, I'm gonna just quote unquote modify the installation. Um, so if you made any mistakes, you can totally look at what I just did 
and reinstall Python at literally any time. And you can also use newer versions of Python as well. So while that finishes installing, what I'm gonna show you is in my finder or file explorer rather, what I wanna do is actually navigate to where that's gonna be loaded. So on my PC, uh, this might actually take a moment because it's installing something. So I'm gonna just let that finish installing and then we'll be right back. All right, so mine finish installing. I'm gonna close this out. And I remembered I installed it on my C drive. That's likely where you're gonna install it. And notice that I have several different versions of Python in here. Python 2.7, 3.3. 6, 3.7, 3.8. Notice that final number is not listed. And that's because, well, it doesn't really matter what that final number is. You just want to use the biggest one, essentially. Now, when you're going into production and you need more secure systems, it certainly matters. But while you're learning, it does not matter at all. Um, and even when you're in development for things that go into production, it probably doesn't matter either. So anyways, that's where it's located. So if we actually open this up and look for the Python application, uh, I can double click and run that. And what it does is it opens up a command line to actually run this. Now, um, on the screen, it's probably hard to see this. I'm going to be switching to a different program to run Python in a moment. But this is actually how you can run it. So you can say one plus one and hit enter. And of course, it means two. So if we just zoom in a little bit, uh, we will see that. And then if I do ABC equals to one, two, three, and then ABC times three, what do you know? There's Python. And if I type out exit and hit enter, it actually closes out that program. That's pretty nice. Okay. So how do I actually run this version of Python as if you were doing development itself? Now, soon we're gonna be downloading a code editor called VS Code, which is actually what we'll be using most of the time to write our commands. But up until we get there, we need to use a program called PowerShell. So if you do a quick search for PowerShell, you'll find this Windows PowerShell application. This is a command line application that allows us to run all sorts of commands for our system beyond just Python, of course. There also is another one called Command Prompt, um, and this is a little bit older of a application. It still runs, but a lot of the commands themselves don't run the same way as they do in PowerShell. So I now have PowerShell open, and this is what I'm gonna be working off of. So a good example of commands that work in PowerShell that don't work on uh, command prompt is LS. LS is a command that certainly works on Linux and Mac machines, and all it's doing is listing out the items that are in any given folder, right? So that's it. That's kind of the idea behind LS. If you're using command prompt, you're gonna use DIR. So as we see, even in Windows, we have two different potential development environments that might cause quite a headache to actually just get things running. So hopefully we can override that by all using PowerShell right now. And then when we do install the text editor or the code editor, called VS Code, we're gonna all use that as well, again, to limit the amount of issues that are just, just minor, but cause a lot of frustration. So what if you forgot that LS only worked on PowerShell, or on PowerShell and you know also on Windows machines, and then you actually were working in Command Prompt and you typed out LS here, here's, a, here's the error, right? It's not a recognizable um, internal or external command it's almost like you're going to have to stop in your tracks there. Well, using PowerShell will prevent that. Okay, so now that we've got this, we have PowerShell, how do I actually run this version of Python? Well, one of the ways we could do this is if we look at the properties of this Python, uh, we could actually see what the location is. And you can also see the location right here um, and inside of the details or somewhere in here. Uh, it actually gives you the location as well. I don't use those properties very often, obviously, uh, but it is definitely in the C drive, Python 36, and then we can actually run Python from PowerShell calling that and then doing another slash and then python.exe and hitting enter. That actually brings me into Python. It's much like I double click and open it but in this case, it's actually opened inside of PowerShell so I can run all sorts of commands. So if I exit out of here, I can actually do that same thing with Python 3.7. 
and so on. So future versions of Python, we could totally do that. And in fact, I believe I have Python 2.7 on here as well. And what do you know, I can even run Python 2.7. This is one of the beauties of open source. They actually make it possible to run different versions of Python on your machine. Think of it like you can't run Windows XP and Windows 10 at the same time, but you totally can run Python, different versions of Python at the same time, which I think is really cool. So, you know, sorry if you already know that, but I think learning these things for beginners is one of those things that's kind of, kind of cool and important. So when it comes to using Python, there is another aspect where I said adding Python as an environment variable. Well, if I actually just type out Python, I will get a version of Python right here. Now, if you have multiple versions installed, you may or may not have 3.6 showing up just typing out Python. In fact, you might have to restart PowerShell or even restart your entire system for these things to hold where you can actually type out Python. So on Windows, especially writing out the absolute path to Python is going to be important from the beginning. Now, it's only important until we actually use a virtual environment, which is what we'll do in a moment. But the, the idea here is if you can get this far, you're certainly ready to create what's called a virtual environment. So it makes it a little bit easier to manage the Python that we're using as well as all of the versions of code that we are gonna be using as well, like the version of Django uh, and the version of many other third-party packages. So what we need to do is we need to actually find a folder that we're gonna store all of our development code in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a directory. So mkdir in the root of my user directory, which is this right here. I'm going to make a directory called dev, D-E-V. This is just a folder that I always create for my projects. You can totally call it something different, but the idea is call it something that you'll remember and that that's where you're going to put all of your code in. Now, as you see here, I already have a folder called dev um, and we can actually look at this directory with ii period. And if I hit ii period, it will open up the file explorer and show me all of the files inside of the folder that I'm currently in, which is in the root of my user folder. Now ii period is a Windows command. If I try open period, which is a Mac command, it will not work. So ii is one of those things, just slightly different. Again, I will mention this whenever I need to open a particular folder in this case. Um, so now what I want to do again, listing everything out with LS, what I want to do is I want to change directories into this dev folder right here. So to do that, I will go CD dev. Now you can try it out with lowercase or you can try it out with uppercase. It doesn't actually matter. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and open up this folder and hit enter. And I have a number of items in here. Uh, now, one of the things I'm not going to do right now is actually create our try Django project. I'm not going to do that one yet. Instead, what I want to do is give you some experience creating virtual environments and why they're so amazing. So what we're going to do is we're going to make dir and we're going to call this py36. And then I'm going to go ahead and cd into or change directory into py36. And of course, if I list everything out, I don't actually have anything in there. So what I want to do now is initialize a virtual environment. So what a virtual environment does is it helps your Python projects, really only Python projects, be isolated from other Python projects. We'll see what this means in a moment. So I'll go ahead and do C colon slash Python 36 slash and then slash Python dot exe and then dash M for module V E N V and then a period at the very end. Now, the reason I'm using a period here also has the same reason as ii period. It's within this currently direct, current directory. ii period opens up that folder in the file explorer and then period at the end of this one will actually create a virtual environment in this folder as well. And this is an absolute path to that. Notice that C is actually lowercase. So it's certainly possible that that could be an error. Let's go ahead and hit enter and see what happens. And there we go. So I'm going to just give it a moment. What's happening right now is Python is actually creating the necessary files for a virtual environment. So if I list things out, I see that I have, now I have a couple folders and a file called pyvenv.cfg. So the Python virtual environment config file 
And now I can actually use this virtual environment, but to use it, I have to activate it. And it's dot slash scripts slash activate. Now dot means to execute in this case. So execute the script called activate. And if I hit enter, we see this in front of it. So this denotes that I actually have Python working on here, uh, or at least the Python virtual environment. And so I can actually do Python dash capital V and hit enter and it shows me the version of Python I'm using. And of course, if I go into Python, it will show me that as well. Now, this actually worked out really nicely because my system version is 3.6 when you type out Python, like I showed you a little bit ago. Um, so we actually wanna take a look at this with a different version of Python, just so you know how to do it. And so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna deactivate the virtual environment just by typing out deactivate. And now this is gone, and so we're good to go. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna CD back and then do II period, and I'm gonna delete that new folder here. Right, so let's go ahead and go by name and I'm gonna delete PY36. So we'll just do shift delete and gone. Okay, so what this will actually do is it will delete everything related to the virtual environment. It might take a minute um, because Python did actually create files. I'm gonna leave it to be deleted. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a new virtual environment. So kind of recapping what we just did using Python 3.7. Cause in my case, I actually have Python 3.7 installed. You don't have to do this part. You could totally use Python 3.6 again. Uh, but if I do Python 37, python.exe dash capital V, I can see that I do have that one installed. So if I use that same thing with dash M, V, E, and V, and now say pi 37 and hit enter, Notice that I didn't use a period this time. Instead, I actually gave the name of the folder I wanted to use. So if I scroll up a little bit, what I will see is that original command. Um, so we did make dir pi 36, and then I actually created the Python virtual environment um, in here as well, which looks like the command just went away. But um, the general idea is when you just run this command right here, it'll actually create a brand new folder for you, which will be evident inside of our dev folder. We see that that folder was created. So it's sort of shortcut a step, if you will. But you know, that, that part gets a little confusing every once in a while as well. So you might miss that. Uh, but if you go into Pi 37, we see all of the different files in here as well. And so we wanna do this one more time and I'm gonna do it with Pi 36 again, just to show you how easy it is to use two different kinds of versions of Python. And um, also, oops, I made a mistake as you probably have noticed, uh, but we're gonna go ahead and go back and let's try and delete that one more time. So let's go up and this time I'll do Pi 36 and this time I'll just call it Pi 3 to shortcut it a little bit. Um, and so I just wanted to show you the different versions of virtual environments or how you actually create these virtual environments. So you can see that two different versions of Python and two different versions of the project can work next to each other. Uh, because as a beginner, the version changes do cause a lot of issues. So let's go ahead and activate the first one. So scripts slash activate, and then we'll go ahead and do Python dash capital V. Notice it's Python 3.7.7. Now the version of Python doesn't matter so much. It's those third party packages, as I mentioned a while ago. And so we see that the virtual environment's activated and it's using this version of Python. If I exit out of here, oops, exit out of the virtual environment with deactivate, not exit like we are exiting out of Python. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and CD back and we're gonna go ahead and CD into Pi 3. And then again, we'll go ahead and scripts slash activate and Python dash V, capital V. And again, Python 3.6.8. And if we scroll up, Python 3.7.7. Okay, so that is installing Python and activating virtual environments. Time and time again, you will need to do this. So if this was really uncomfortable for you, I have a whole series for installing Python on your Windows machine. And I will also say this is not the only way to create virtual environments. I've just come to find that the built-in virtual environment manager 
is the easiest one for the vast majority of beginners, but there are other ones out there. There's one called Pip V, which I used to really, really like using. There's another one called Poetry. Uh, there's a lot out there, even something called Anaconda, but Anaconda also installs Python for you, so I don't recommend that with Django. Uh, but the general idea is we want to isolate our code from other versions of Python and other third-party versions. That's really the gist of this. And so if you have any questions, let me know in the comments. Of course, going forward, we're going to be back on that Mac machine. Um, but as you see here, it's actually going to be hopefully very, very similar. I'm not going to divert too many of the commands from what you would also be doing on PowerShell. So again, let me know if you have any questions. Otherwise, let's keep going.